Welcome back. In the studio today, we are very happy to have guest and author, Teresa Fraser. So Teresa, don't yeah. sell yourself short. There's a wonderful book. Why don't we get right into the book and tell yes. us a little bit of like the synopsis of the book, and then we'll delve into it further. Awesome. Thank you so much. Look at that word, delve into that. <laughs> I know. Wow, delve we're so it. fancy. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we're, you're going to be ending up with a comic, though, today, because it is, you're right, it is a moving book, but it is yes. also a very sensitive book. Yeah. So um, I'm a practicing play therapist here in... Ontario, and our head office is in Brampton, and ah, we'll give you a pen. I love it. Hey, hey, we're always taking pictures. There you go. Like yeah. Like we love it. Branching out. So we awesome. provide play therapy and therapeutic uh -huh. groups and training for kids that have been traumatized and experienced attachment disruptions. So a lot of the kids, we work with our kids in foster care, and mm -hmm. we hear so much in the media about uh, kids in foster care being abused by perhaps so foster awful. parents and being neglected. And in my work, I see some really amazing foster parents that are helping kids and going above and beyond day in, day out. So I wanted to write a book that honored that and also helped to normalize the foster care experience for kids that, you know, may be going into foster care or, you know, a kid goes to school one day and Billy was in his class and now he's not and they know he's going to a foster home mm. and no one knows what that means and it conjures up all sorts of what a horrible place for a child and though we want kids to live at home, um, you know, not all foster, foster homes the, are horrible. Let's show the book if we can. It's a really a lovely There's cover the though. Thank you. It's right to the and, point. And, and, and obviously this book has a from your own experiences dealing mm -hmm. with all different situations, I, I assume? Yep. Um, my husband and I have also been foster parents for over 20 years. Wow. And when I was a little person, I was in foster care for Can a Can I ask bit. you a question? For, for the people at home uh, mm -hmm. uh, who may be interested in, in looking into becoming a foster parent, I'm sure there's some pretty strict guidelines as to becoming one, but oh, yeah. how, how can you let our people know a little bit about the process maybe in, sure. in becoming a, a foster uh, parent? Well, it's not, so you can't just pick up the phone one day and say, hey, I'm going to be a foster yeah. parent. Every province in Ontario has legislation legislation and requirements that foster parents would have to go through for a screening process. Mm -hmm. The same is true in our province of Ontario. Um, every local children's aid society has information nights and um, there's also treatment foster care programs which is what my husband and I have fostered for for those kids that have additional issues that perhaps um, you know they're going to need a lot more support because of their trauma experiences. And you said for 20 years you've been, you guys mm -hmm. have been foster parents? How yeah. many children? Well, the first eight years we had adolescent girls, mm -hmm. um, and they would come. We would come in, they'd assess them, and then they, we would find a long-term placement for them. And we figured out we probably had about two hundred of those. Wow! What? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So our oldest wow. biological son, who's twenty-one, has always grew up with older kids. Many and, siblings to him. Yeah, huh? lots of siblings, and really has a good. Both both our biological sons really have a good sense of people, and are really empathetic and supportive. And so, just to give our, our viewers a little bit of a, of a structure, maybe. Do, do kids come to the foster, like, I guess, to the organization, if that's what you want to call it, when they're babies, when they're any age, right? Like Any age. Any age. Yeah. Really? And I guess it's true the way from, because I've researched a little bit, the older you get, the harder it is to get to put into a home, I guess. Like a yeah, family. that's Absolutely. so sad. I know. Well, and it's really important for foster parents to recognize that some kids, they're coming into care and they're not looking. We're not, foster parents aren't supposed to be replacing biological parents. No. You're providing additional support yeah. and trying to help the kids get back home. That's the goal. I was going to say, give us a couple of examples of, of what your, what the goals for the foster parents are, like to get the kids back back home because their family's yeah. going through a hard time. Maybe the mom's you know, addicted to drugs or the yep. father or whatever. And maybe they yep. te temporarily need to be yep. removed. Yeah, in my, ca in my case, my mom was ill and was hospitalized, and my parents were young, so my sister and I. So it's all different circumstances. Yeah, there's all sorts of different circumstances. And yeah. give us a little bit of feedback on, on, on what the kids have to say about it. How do they feel? Like, what's... Yeah. Well, you can imagine for you had said yourself that you had you have a I'm little done. girl. I'm Could done. you imagine being picked up at school and saying, "I'm sorry, you can't go home today. You're gonna, we're gonna I'm no. a social worker and I'm taking you to a new home." That happens to hundreds of kids every day. I can't imagine in Toronto. But who um, who who advises these these people that you know that a certain child needs to be pulled away from home? How do they assess that? Well, the children's aid societies all across Canada and the same in the U.S. They yeah. have they have, they have rules they have to follow. They're mandated. There has to be specific reasons. It has to be investigated. It has to be checked out, um, and then kids can come in here. And sometimes it may be only for a few days until another relative is found, um, or sometimes there's a bigger issue, like you, you identified 
J, there may be a, you know, substance similar. abuse yeah. or physical abuse or extreme neglect. And the goal for the courts in the interim could be let's give these parents as much parent debt or support as we can, and then we're going to review it in three months, the kids go home. And that, in fact, does happen. Mm. It does happen. Yeah, but mm. then there's other cases where the kids are not going to be able to go back home and they are going to be in foster care for a long period of time. Um, really? Now, now, foster kids or foster homes, does that also include, like, I guess, orphans or, like, is that Absolutely. part of the, part yep. of the, the mix, if you yep. would call it? Yeah. Uh, and the province, uh, last month, a big paper was released around trying to motivate more adoptions to happen for kids that are in care. Mm. So, and that's going to happen. Now, what are some of the quali? I mean, briefly, a brief outline. What would be some of the quali quali qualifications for a parent to a, to get a foster? Okay. Care well, right? the agency that we foster for is called Carpe Diem Treatment Foster Homes for Children, and they look for uh, people that have a really good understanding of what normalized development is, because we need to understand what we want for kids, right. and mm -hmm. then recognize what's not working, and then figure mm -hmm. out what we need to plug in to help kids get on to the next developmental mm -hmm. stage. Lots of flexibility, uh, right. ability to work with kids that have been severely traumatized, ability to work with adults and try and be as respectful and supportive of the bi biological parents as possible. Um, okay, and you're working important. as part of a team too. Yeah. So there's maybe social workers and lawyers and occupational therapists and play therapists like myself. Um, and everybody's working together to try mm. and help help the kids and work what, on what their issues the, are. Uh, do the parents stay in touch with the foster parents or how does that work? It's, it's all on a case by case basis, Jay. It just depends on the situation. So it and works for you guys sort of, I guess. Yeah. I with, yeah yeah, and I've had some cases where I've had moms come over when I was working, had kids that were Jamaican, for example, and mm -hmm. they wanted to have curry goat, and I'd say, I don't know how to cook that. Bring your mom over. Oh, really? So oh, mom really? would come and help help do some cooking. Absolutely. And can try I? To stay the as the much as you can. Unity, you some could. cases you can't. Yeah. The, the courts may say there's a no contact rule or the kids are at risk. Depending how severe, too. Absolutely. You don't want to keep, you know, that's all depends on So in on those that. cases, foster parents want to try, even if there's no family contact, try and honor the child's culture and help I facilitate that, whether it's faith or culture or language. And how about single parents now? Or what's the criteria for single oh, parents? Oh, we, there's uh, so single, single, single parents. parents so. There's, I mean, families come in all shapes and sizes now. So we have gay couples that are fostering. Oh, um, grandparents oh, that's, that's fostering. amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that they don't is really so say, oh, amazing. no, because you're single or because you're no. gay, you're out? No, it's all about matching. I think that's incredible, of fostering. It's all about love and the right people. It shouldn't yep. be defined uh, as a specific unit. It should be about the qualifications of a person. And right? matching that person with matching the child. Matching it, yeah, rather yeah, than it's it, so uh, important. you know, labeling. Because could you imagine if someone said to you, okay, you know what, Jay, I think you'd be good with her. You can go home with her and you're, she's going to be your wife and you can live with her. Yeah, exactly. And I say that sometimes foster parents will say, you're having a hard time. It's like, well, they're, it's like they're going to a brand new world. New yeah. rules, new food, new unspoken rules. And, and, and sorry, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, in, you've, you've fostered a lot of, of children or, yep. or, you know, teens or whatnot. How have you, have you kept in touch with them after they've left yeah. it? How have they been doing? Like, oh, you know? you know what? I see some really, one, one of my gals, um, I, at, you know, at 12 was, you know, she would, she got herself in all sorts of trouble and we advocated strongly. She really wanted to take horseback riding lessons. Yes. And they were like, oh, we don't know if she's going to be in care and she's not going to stay with you long. And she ended up taking, getting her horseback riding lessons and she's now a jockey at the Ontario Jockey Club. How really? And this amazing. kid's doing great. And she'll oh, phone periodically great. and say, you know, I'm running this horse today or I'm running that horse. Oh. And if she hadn't have done, if the social worker hadn't have, at Peel Children's Aid hadn't have said, yeah, I'm going to get behind that. Well, I guess giving you know, back can't even be measured in the kids' no. eyes. No. When can't that, yeah. well, and as a foster yeah. parent to say, wow, like Both you ways. did that. We yeah. supported you, but you did yeah. that. You're so, you're so yeah. proud of the kids and they're so totally. thankful that they had guidance, I guess. And yeah. I think it's so, uh, I think what children need, and I, I've said this before many times is they need people to just listen to them and respect them as people not to yeah. look down on them oh they're just kids but just you know these are people you know with hopes with dreams yeah. that can strive to be amazing if you just listen and give them the time I think that a lot of times people don't give children time to like actually have a conversation and have a voice have and a voice we're trying to do that in Billy's case his grandmother died he, she was the person that was looking after him and he went into a foster home and the book really talks about a child's reactions to you know what, what's the food going to be like here? Did you mm. pack my favorite stuffed animal? So I don't have my book is basically your experiences. Some of my experiences as a foster parent and also as a therapist. Tied into a story. Yeah. So Billy's all obviously a, a fiction, fictional character. He's a fictional character. Somebody, yeah. yeah but the uh, illustrator Alex Walton's from Vancouver and he's a part time firefighter and illustrator. And he said, What do you want him to look like? And I said, I want him to look real. Um, so he I definitely sent looks him real. Some, well, he, he's, I sent him pictures of our adopted son. Our oh, youngest adopted beautiful. son. So what he based like the pictures on him. Is we would love to have you back on the show because this is such a fascinating topic. If you would, uh, we'll, we'll be in touch. 
if people want to get in touch with you, mm -hmm. um, would you have a website or yep. an email or if you want to tell our listeners what it is? Well, my website's my name, so it's okay. www.teresafraser.com. And it's Teresa with an H uh -huh. and Fraser with an S. And uh, also, there's another website here on your lovely uh, gift, uh, www.branchingout1.com. Yep. And this is another organization that you're part of, right? Yeah, that's, that's with my work hat on. Yes. So I'm a manager of clinical services there. And that's yeah. uh, anyone. We get a lot of referrals for families with adoption and families in the community whose kids have experienced that's incredible. trauma or need some support. Very and uh, can, can you very flash good, yes. the, the book open? Because there's the inside. There's like look at that illustration. Pictures. It's yeah. really, 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 really well oh, done. I guess you can see it. No, you can oh, see you it. You can kind yeah, of see it there. Isn't That's that incredible. Lovely? That's coming out of a play therapy room. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, I love that. Well, that's thank great, you. Teresa. Thank you thank for being you. on our show today. Well, thanks Please for do having keep in touch. me. And thank you for everything that you're doing. It's very, very amazing and commendable. That uh, you oh, know, I'm one of many. There's lots of heroes around.